It's time for Climate A to Z, where our chief meteorologist and chief climate correspondent, Ginger Z, debunks climate misinformation and answers your weather and climate questions. And today she's responding to a controversial study that claims climate change is not actually causing sea level rise. And, and Ginger, some experts are actually calling for the journal's publisher to retract this study. Why? Yes. Uh, well, you were going to learn a lot about what was not in this study that should have been. And it kind of reminds me of what I like to do on Friday nights, Diane. I like to search for that one study that says drinking a few glasses of wine isn't that bad for you. <laughs> that way I can open a bottle of Pinot Noir and ignore the hundreds of studies that say no amount of alcohol is healthy. The only thing at risk with that flawed scientific approach, though, is my liver. When it comes to sea level rise, turns out one study in a sea of decades of others does not mean that sea level rise isn't going up. Here in Lower Manhattan, especially since Hurricane Sandy, sea level rise is a threat that's kind of always looming. So you can imagine people's excitement when there came a study that said, hey, it's not that big of a deal and it's not climate change causing it. Well, here's a comment I got about that. Here's a link to a new study that shows there's no threat of rising sea levels and the previous models got it wrong. It's fair to review the quote, science, when it runs counter to the prevailing narrative, right? Well, one new study doesn't really make for a new reality, but let's look at it, because I'm intrigued. The study was published in the Journal of Marine Science and Engineering in August 2025, and the study actually says that sea level is not rising in most areas, and that human amplified climate change is not the cause. What? Isn't that the opposite of everything we've heard? The study specifically looked at the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change's 2021 projections and compared them to tidal gauges and actual data from local stations. It found that at 95% of the locations, there was no significant sea level rise. Well, an overwhelming number of studies and climate scientists disagree, and that includes Robert Kopp. Now, he is a climate scientist, a researcher who has spent his whole career looking at sea level rise, and he's actually gonna be a lead author on the next global climate report. Since around 1990, the rate of global average sea level rise has about doubled um, as the planet has continued to warm. Dr. Kopp and 14 of his colleagues actually were concerned enough about the contents of this study that they submitted a letter to the journal asking for that study to be retracted. You are trying to overturn this large mass of evidence with your one study, and chances are there is something wrong with your one study if you can't explain what's wrong with all of these other studies. The first concern is that the authors claim this is a first-of-a-kind study to include local observations, but Kopp and his colleagues say that's just not true. There have been other studies like this that look at local observations, but they've come to dramatically different conclusions. The group also says there are fundamental statistical flaws in the study's analysis, like using an unrealistic threshold for sea level rise. Dr. Kopp and the other scientists also said that this study excluded satellite data, which is obviously been proven to be very accurate. Turns out there was another study published at exactly the same time in the American Geophysical Union's Earth Future Journal that said the IPC's predictions were spot on. Climate scientists know there is a lot of variability when it comes to sea level rise, especially on a local level. But like global temperature, the whole trend is up. When we talk about sea level rise, we don't mean sea level in 2025 versus 2024. What we mean is like the average sea level over a 19 year period centered in 2025 versus an average period centered in 2005 because there are climate variability and tidal variability and other things that do cause year-to-year -year variability. We reached out to one of the authors of the study, Hessel Vortman, and he told us in an email here that he's been a coastal adaptation practitioner for more than 30 years. He said he and his co-author addressed the critical question of how projected sea level rise compares to observed trends with the goal of enhancing the scientific foundation on the subject. He acknowledged the criticism of his work and called the constructive critique a, quote, cornerstone of the scientific process, but he did decline to comment specifically on the criticism. We also contacted the journal about Dr. Kopp's concerns, and they told us that they're aware of his concerns, and they've opened an investigation, and it's being overseen by their editorial board. They said they can't say more until the investigation is through, but will update us when they can. So who are we to believe? Well, in the case of the IPCC, we're talking hundreds of scientists that have dedicated their entire career to talking about our changing climate. And 
the sea level rise. They found with high confidence that human amplified climate change is the main driver of present day sea level rise and it's accelerating. And believe me, I know it's not as sexy because it's scary. And listen, we've learned a ton about our planet and about sea level rise, but there's still a lot we don't know. And I promise you, if there become dozens of peer reviewed studies that support that study that say that sea level rise is not caused by human amplified climate change or that we are not having an impact, I will be the first to let you know. On top of sea level rise, other factors are impact coastlines like subsidence or the sinking of the land and then eddies in the ocean that will make some decades better than others for different spots along the coast. So it's not going to be this linear up in every single place. Mm -hmm. now, Ginger, you are a scientist. So mm -hmm. for those of us who aren't, when you're reading a scientific study, what are your tips to figure out which are credible, which aren't, or maybe something that falls somewhere in the middle? Yeah, really important to make sure that the study is peer reviewed, meaning one or two people didn't just make something up and then nobody else checked their work. Second, consider the source and the funding, and then look at all the research on that subject, not just that one study. As I said in the story, one study does not change years of a consensus. And while I have you here, the UN Climate Conference just wrapped up with this last minute deal. What impact do you think that could have? I think that there, you know, there's some good in there, but of course there's quite a few things that a lot of groups were not happy with. Uh, there were high hopes of having a cop in a gateway to the Amazon right there in the rainforest. The agreement though that they made did not include any significant new initiatives to stop deforestation to protect the lungs of the planet. It also failed to include a roadmap to phase out fossil fuels worldwide, which are the primary cause of human amplified climate change. On one positive note, they did triple the amount of money for adaptation, which we are gonna need. All right, we'll take that. Chief Meteorologist, Chief Climate Correspondent, Ginger Z. Always great to have you, Ginger. Thank you. You got it.